So in the last video, we talked about how we use dip trace to create a schematic. And in this video, we're going to use dip trace and we're going to take the schematic that we created and we're actually going to turn it into a funky circuit board pattern, which we can then print onto our glossy paper and then use the heat press to melt that onto our copper board so that we can begin making our custom circuit board. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to use dip trace to create this pattern using our schematic over here. And before we leap into the software, I'll just go over some terminology over here. All of the little lines that you see over here are called traces. And the circles, the squares, whether they're small or big, they are called pads. Let's hop into dip trace and let's open up our schematic. In order to turn our schematic into a cool circuit board design, we actually need to open up the schematic capture program and pull up your schematic that exists in front of you. So here I have it. And it's very important that before you turn this into a circuit board design, you want to actually double check to make sure that all the components are there and everything that should be connected is connected and everything that shouldn't be connected is not. And the reason why I tell you this is that when we move into the circuit board design phase, it's going to take all of the information that you've put here, all of the components and what they're connected to, and it's going to turn them into a circuit board. So if you have a mistake here, that mistake is going to copy itself onto the circuit board. So please proofread this before you move on to creating a circuit board. Now I'm happy with this, so let's convert this into a circuit board. We're going to click File, and under File is Convert to PCB, which is short for Printed Circuit Board. So I'm going to left click that, and what it's doing is it's taking all the information in my schematic and it's transferring it to the second program. At this point it will ask you a few things. Just make sure that Use Schematic Rules is selected, and just go ahead and hit OK and it will take you to the next program. And here is our next program. So the really cool thing about our program and our component library that we were using is that it took the schematic symbol. For example, here is the LM386 dip chip and connected to each symbol is the correct copper pads with the correct spacing so that when you were to put this on a circuit board, and drill out the holes and solder it, that little dip chip would fit nicely into that hole over there. Before we start playing with the stuff in the middle over here, we need to actually change a few of the default settings. So for this video, just follow along and copy me. First things first, you're going to go and click the root and you're gonna open up this taskbar. You're going to find the option that says current auto router. And as you look at current auto router, you want to make sure that the grid router is checked in. So, yep, that's good. The next thing that you want to do is you want to go down to auto router setup, left click it, and you might see a default setting that kind of looks like this. So there's a few things that you want to change. First, under traces, you want to make sure that it's both 90 and 45. Next, unselect root without vias. And next, unselect use all layers. This will open up a little dialog box there and you want to change number of layers to just one. So pause the video and make sure that your grid router setup is the same as mine. Hit OK. The last thing that you're going to do is you're going to go back to root and you're going to find root setup and left click that. Once we see router setup we want to go to trace width. It's currently at 0.01 I'm going to make the trace width a little bit wider. I'm going to do 0.04 and I'm going to hit OK. And the reason why we want to increase the trace width or what that does is that as you remember, the black lines that will ultimately become the copper traces, their width is determined by what you set up here. So if you set it to 0.01, you'll have very, very skinny, thin traces that might make it hard for you to solder. But by making it 0.04, we'll have wider traces, which makes it easier to solder, and there's less chances for screw up. 
And so at this point, our program is ready to go, and we are ready to start uh, drawing those copper lines to connect our components. But uh, I will show that in the next video. Go ahead and watch the second video on how to uh, start connecting your components together.